Hey, just wanted to give everybody a quick tutorial on the Pixel Mosh Pit kit, just to kind of show you how easy it is, uh, but then a little more detailed way. Uh, this artwork was provided by, and I'm probably going to murder the name, Nemanja Merkovic, or Merkovic, I'm not, not sure. Uh, but anyways, he provided it in the um, DTF printing group, um, so check that out. So I just wanted to kind of show everyone how simple it can really be. Uh, let's say I want to get this on a black shirt. Um, in the kit, I'm just going to hit this at the top, Add Garment Color button. So I think it would look really good on black, but let's turn that off. And the way this kit works yeah, right now in Affinity, you have to use one layer turned on, um, turn everything else off. So I'm going to start with just a quick knockout editable because I want to make some tweaks to it real fast. So once you have that knocked out, you could actually, you're ready to go. You could rasterize now. You can't rasterize... Um, uh, doing the knockout stuff right off the bat because you need to have some semi-transparent pixels to kind of work with. Um, otherwise, you're just doing kind of like a stencil. But anyway, so let's make a quick adjustment the way this works, and I'll have um, there's going to be the new version coming out pretty soon. Uh, had some delays, but anyways, you can see down here raster adjustments 2.0 to get them to match together. Um, but anyway, so I did the knockout editable. I just drag this uh, levels adjustment layer and clip it next to the mask layer that's doing the actual uh, knockout. Double click the, the uh, thumbnail for levels, switch the channel to alpha because that's what deals with transparency. And then the black is um, non-visible and white is visible. So you increase the white by pulling it this way, which will increase the visibility that you have. So I'll, I'll bump some of that up and then I'll also bump the black or non-visible stuff up a little bit to erase some of this stuff because there, there's some noise out here on the outside in the original artwork and you can kind of you know, pull that back a little bit. So I'll pull back something like that. And I like to work non-destructively so I always duplicate before I do anything. So now I'm going to duplicate, turn off the old one. I'm just going to rasterize my results here in the group. And now it's ready. Um, I'm going to head over here. First thing you want to also make sure is your document resolution. You're going to down if you find this and download it. It's at 72 DPI. You want to bump things up to at minimum 300 DPI. Um, the high, what's cool about Affinity is you can dynamically change this. So if you go to like 600, 1200, it'll take longer to process, but your halftone dots will be a higher quality. Um, I like to tell people to use nearest neighbor because it's not going to play with your pixels when you bump it up, but um, yeah, it'll be fine, but it's, it's a good habit to use nearest neighbor because it basically turns off anti-aliasing, which is essentially blurring your pixels. And then I'll click resize. So um, this document's at 300, I know, um, now because I just checked. And now I'm going to use the 100% opaque pixels. This will change, the, the name will change in the new uh, version to match the Photoshop side of things. But let's just go ahead and click that and let it process. Okay, that was pretty quick. Now it's done and it's ready to go. So this is the kind of lazy way to get it done. And I'll show you why. So it looks good here. Um, at this point, your halftone, you're ready to go. You shouldn't have any issues printing DTF. Um, it's basically, you can see the halftone dots. There's no, there aren't, you know, isn't any blurring or anything like that. Just ready to go. Um, the other thing that when I said lazy is there's transparency in certain areas. So it's, ha it's really halftoning everything. Um, but you can see at a distance, most people aren't going to be able to tell. But my advice is, and we'll do the long-winded version of this um, in a second, but I would, if you have access to layers, keep your text and, and solid objects, um, you know, in layers by themselves. Because, you, you know, a lot of the times you just turn off anti-aliasing by the layer in Affinity, which is you could select the layer, hit the little gear here, and turn, this is anti-aliasing, you see it's inheriting it, which is default but we can force it off. And I'll actually turn it off for like text layers and stuff like that. So when you output, you're not getting any blurring. But that is the lazy way. So all, re all you really have to do is make sure you do a knockout first, choose the type of knockout. In the new kit, you'll have a knockout white in Affinity as well. So you'll have a bunch of, you know, the six main hues, black, white, you can knock those out. Then you process with your rasterization stuff. Um, so let's show you the, uh, I guess, the less lazy way of doing it. So if you have the original artwork, which I do. Uh, that's the knocked out version. Let's not get that one. Here's the original. I'm going to delete all the stuff. Here's the original artwork, and like I showed you before, um, if I turn on the background for a moment, you can see that there's a lot of just 
semi-transparent noise here that we would want to get rid of and you can do that in the knockout process but this is solid tech stuff so my advice is you want to essentially erase that stuff but I'm going to use knockout black to my advantage I don't want to print the black if I'm going to print it on a black shirt and what I would essentially do here is I would start with the knockout black once I have it knocked out this black is going to get knocked out which will kind of give me a little area I can select and, and um, uh, essentially remove the text and maybe even these solid squares uh, and, and put them in their own separate layer so let's do the knockout editable that's ready to go drag that on top of the mask to clip it to it double click on the thumbnail change the um, channel to alpha and then we'll decrease how much we want to actually remove like I said here um, you could essentially pull most of it back in you can bring it all the way here and you can see all this noise that I honestly don't want to keep um, so but I do want to keep some of this stuff um, you know these this this interior area I, I'm gonna bump up till I get that kind of solid and then maybe bump the black up to get rid of just a lot of that noise out here that's cool and now that that's done um, I'm gonna go do what I said before it and work non-destructively duplicate it and then I'm gonna merge it all down and now this part I'm gonna probably speed up but I'm just gonna be making selections here um, I want to select all the text and all these squares and um, actually made a mistake I need to bump this up before I do all this stuff but again there's another way we can fix it and I'll show you is just crop all this stuff out get it in a separate layer and then process this alien and you know the galaxy background by themselves so uh, what I'll do is I'll start with the lasso tool and what's cool about in, in Affinity with the lasso tool if you start a selection and my advice is turn on add mode so you're always adding to the selection as you go um, if you hold shift it'll actually turn into um, a, a straight uh, like poly, uh, poly, polygonal um, lasso selection so I'm gonna click hold shift and you'll see I get a nice straight line it just snaps otherwise you can manually draw and get squiggly lines so if you hold shift release shift tap it again you'll keep getting the straight line and you can kinda hop through and create your selection so um, at this point I'm just going to go ahead and speed up the video. Okay, so now that I basically have everything selected, you can see there's a lot of like artifact garbage floating around pixel-wise. That's probably stuff you're going to want to clean up, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to kind of move quick. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to head up to Edit, hit Cut, then Edit, um, Paste, I believe, Paste Special, no, not Paste Special, um, we'll just hit Paste. Um, there's no Paste in place. Uh, anyways, I'll deselect with that, and now that I have this stuff in here, honestly, all I have to do is I can run a super dupe, um, which is it's just essentially it's doing multiple um, duplications. Sometimes you have to run it more than once, so I'm going to hit super dupe once, let that run, and I can check, and it looks like everything's solid, but if you want to make sure, do it one more time. So there's the super dupe these two results I, I really don't need anymore they're done but what's cool is now I have this that I can process by itself and then I have the text and everything here I can leave alone because I honestly don't need to rasterize anything I don't want to get any sort of weird stuff going on now I personally would get rid of all this noise but like I said for the sake of the tutorial leaving it alone so I'm gonna process this, this guy and the way the kit works right now until the update my advice is just make sure the one that you're working on is at the top turn everything else on this is the one I want to process. I'm going to do the cosine 14, 100% opaque pixels, cosine 14. Hit that, let it process. And we'll essentially be good, good, go for the most part, but any of the spots where we're meeting, um, meeting the text, we'll probably might have to fill in some of that. Whoops. So here's our rasterization. Here's the text. Drag it on. And you'll see, yeah, there's, there's going to be some issues, but if you take your time, you can solve that stuff. But... If I turn on the background, we're good to go. You'll have nice solid block areas here that you can print out. And you've got the nice rasterization going on. And you can also change the size and get smaller in Affinity if you just change the document size uh, resolution. So that basically covers it. You've got the fast and slow versions, um, or lazy and less lazy versions of running the kit. 
Okay, so here's the Photoshop version, um, and we'll run through pretty quick. So for rasterization to work, you need to have semi-transparent pixel to work. So this one, technically, you could do it immediately. There's some semi-transparent pixels here. But if we're trying to get this on a black shirt, um, we need to do knockout black. Um, we don't always have to, but my advice is there's no point in printing the black with DTF a lot of the time because you're going to get a shiny reflection. You know, it's, it's a different material than the shirt. I'd rather use the shirt to create the black than um, a DTF black because it's going to it's gonna reflect light. It's going to be like a shiny black, which is kind of defeats the point of a black. So I'm just going to hit Add Garment Color to throw it on a black background so you can see if I you know delete some of the black, it would be a good looking image. But here's how we, we do it. Um, what I would do is run the knockout black first and adjust it to where I, I hit a sweet spot. So I'm going to click that and let it run. It outputs a group that has the actual hues and a mass that essentially um, is knocking out the black, but also you have the black if you want to keep it. Um, a lot of the times if you're messing with this mask, you need this black channel, but it's there to turn off and on. And if you turn off that black channel, you're actually getting pure color, but the mask knocks out the black, leaving it like the original. So here, what you're looking at is my knockout with just pure color and that black layer turned off. I'm going to turn on a black background, and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take the original artwork, drag it above, and turn it on. And you're going to see there's nothing color difference beyond the edges that have transparent pixels, because it's going to get handled a little different. It's kind of stacking on top of, remember, this has transparency, and the original has transparency, so it's compounding the amount of pixels on top of each other. So the edges are the only things you're going to see different, but the color is perfect. Um, I don't play with your color at all. Um, so anyways, we're going we're, we're gonna to process it that way. So let me put the original back where it was, turn off the black background, uh, and here's, here's our um, knockout black, basically. I just explained what's in the contents. So once you've done that, you could, you could adjust and do stuff, but if you're doing where you turn off the black channel, I, my advice is don't adjust the mask, but if you do, leave it on. But let's go ahead, we'll leave, I'm not going to mess with the mask at all, and we're just going to process. So um, all of these rasterize buttons are default 300 dpi, so you need to make sure that your image, and we'll go ahead and check, we'll go to image size. So default, when I downloaded it, it's at 72 dpi. If you run those rasterizations at this resolution, it's going to mess them up. If you run it higher than 300, it will mess them up. You need to be at 300, so make sure your resolution's at 300. If you're scaling it up, um, or even scaling it down, my advice is turn on nearest neighbor as your interpolation method for resampling, because it's not going to play with your pixels. And we'll hit OK. So now that we're at 300 after this runs through, I'm going to use the buttons to do it. And I'm just going to stick with the simple stuff. Rasterize, round, um, 85 LPI. So this is running through. Oh, you know what? Let me hit cancel. Um, that's taking a while because the original image is at like 82 inches. <laughs> so it's a pretty giant image. Um, yeah, Photoshop's kind of freaking out. So let me go back. It's at 83 inches. I don't need that at 300 dpi. I want to do 12 inches wide by 300 dpi, and that should be much faster. So I hit OK. Image processes. So now we're where we're supposed to be. I want to print this at 12 inches wide, and it's at 300 dpi. Now all these buttons should work. So with that one selected, I'll click this, and we'll be good to go. So it's going to run through. It's handling. It's opening up a couple different documents, doing some stuff, applying the half-toning, knocking things out. And once it's done, we're good to go. So now it's done. If I zoom in, you'll see we got perfect non-anti-aliased pixels ready for print with pure color and if i turn on the black background it looks fantastic as close to the original as you'll get you can always play around adjust your colors after you're done so you can see remember we're knocking stuff out you're not going to get a perfect color reproduction you're, you'll get as close as you can but um with the rasterized version you can hop in and start playing with color if you want to uh but yeah that is how you kind of run through it and i it, the same issues you'll have um, in Photoshop as you did in Affinity. My advice is solid objects and text. If you have the layers, export them out separately and you're going to have an easier time so you don't get everything half-toned like you're seeing here. But if you're fine with that, I most people don't complain about it, but uh, my advice is if you can't extract stuff, extract it out and you don't need to process it with um, rasterization. Anything else that has blending and stuff like this, where shadows are going in and out, go ahead and rasterize that. So that covers the Photoshop side. Um, I didn't think I had time for it, but I threw it in anyway. So hope you guys got something from this. If you've got any questions, 
hit me up in the comments if you're interested in the kits. You have the Photoshop and the Affinity Photo version available on pixelmoshpit.com. And uh, thanks to the group again. This is uh, not my artwork. It's Iron Maiden's... Um, I forget what tour that was. It was like Future... Future something or other. But it's, it's in there. You can find it and kind of play around with it. So um, anyways, uh, thanks for watching.